So, after watching Midsummer and her role as Yelena Belova, I decided I would watch anything with Florence Pugh in it. Uh, if she was a part of it, I was going to see it. I love her. She's awesome. Uh, she's one of my favorite young actors working right now. So this was a definite watch for me as soon as I heard of heard of it, heard about it. You know, um, I had no idea what the film was about, uh, but once I saw a general synopsis, I became a little more intrigued. Uh, the general synopsis went something like this. In an experimental 1950s picturesque town, everything seems perfect, but something is amiss. Pretty straightforward, right? Uh, it, it leaves, it, it, it's really open-ended. So, it, it could really end up being about anything, and I love that. Like, nowadays films, they give away way too much in the trailers, way too much uh, in the synopsis. You know, they, they, they give you so much, and it takes away some of the enjoyment. Of the film, so I really appreciated this short, sweet synopsis that I got. Uh, it gave me a small clue, you know, like something wasn't right about this picturesque town, uh, but it didn't give me any clue as to what that might be. It actually reminded me a lot of um, of Midsummer, also with Florence Pugh, uh, very similar kind of story, uh, and a little bit of a Truman Show feels as well. Now. I said I love Florence Pugh, but she's not the only great thing about this film. The cast is incredible. Harry Styles is great as Jack, and man, is is Chris Pine is phenomenal as Frank, the sort of head of this community and the company that all the men in the community work for. Um, he oh, he's awesome. He's an awesome villain, dude. He really is. Uh, also, the aesthetic was great, right? The fifties. Very, like, 50s period piece vibes. Uh, that was great, and I absolutely love the soundtrack. Outside of the creepy but somewhat generic ominous tones throughout, there was, like, a lot of fantastic 50s-era music, you know, uh, blasting from the speakers all throughout the film. Wonderful soundtrack, and, you know, if you're into that sort of thing, which I absolutely am into that sort of thing. So I was really engaged uh, throughout the entire film, uh, I kind of had a general idea of what was going on by by the halfway point, but but not to the full extent of what is revealed. So basically, I really enjoyed it. As I said, you know, the, the cast was terrific, the plot was a lot of fun, and it turns out to to not only be a psychological thriller, but one of my favorite categories, science fiction as well, which was a, a nice little twist near the end. But I was hoping to see a little bit more. With the ending, for me, it felt a, a little bit flat when the reveal happens. You know, the, actually, the good reveal happens. Like when when the real turn of the film happens, and like you're, you finally everything is revealed. It's about 15 minutes before the end of the film, and that was really fun. You know, but I thought this kind of film needed a a more ominous ending than we got. You know, that that's that's the only drawback for me, and the only negative thing I really have to say about it. Overall, I gave it an eight out of ten. Very enjoyable. I would recommend it to others, uh, but this is not something I need to watch over and over, right? It's not one of those. It's not a repeat watcher. Not that I'll never watch it again, but it's not one I'm going to have on repeat. It was really good, not great. Now, the title promises that I would explain the ending for those of you who maybe didn't pay super close attention or, or just got lost somewhere along the way. Um, I thought it was going to be pretty straightforward. I thought maybe the people in the town were just brainwashed, hypnotized, uh, put into a real-life community out in the desert and kept there, like kind of like a by like this like cult leader, right, who ran everything. But that wasn't quite right. Basically, what was really going on in this film is that Chris Pine's character, Frank, had created a digital world, a computer program that that people could live inside, sort of like The Sims basically take on the roles of characters after being hypnotized and, and, you know, made to believe that they were the characters they were supposed to be playing. But the terrifying part about all this is that all the men were fully aware. The women in the community, they were drugged and hypnotized and put under, you know, put into this program by their husbands 
who kind of struggled in real life, right? In, in the real world, they maybe weren't meeting their full potential, right? They, they didn't feel like men. They, 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 they wanted power and respect, and, and they wanted to be looked up to and, and by their wives and taken care of. And, you know, very much like the 1950s, right? Where women would stay home for the most part, care for the home, raise the kids, that sort of thing. Um, and, and these guys wanted that for themselves. You know, they, they wanted to be uh, respected, like I said, and, and, and kind of fawned over by their wives. And, you know, very 50s era nuclear family world. Um, and then Harry Styles' character, Jack's life w- was... very similar, right? Like, like that's what he was going through. He was feeling like a loser. He lost his job. Uh, his wife, Alice was doing really well. She's a breadwinner working as a surgeon. And you know, that's not the life he wanted, right? So he discovered this program online where you could go into this virtual world and, and, and your wife would be subservient and, and you would live with other people. And, you know, uh, but the only, the only hitch for the men is you had to pledge all of your other time outside of your home to this company, right? I don't know exactly what the company is. You know, maybe it's just running the servers, maintaining the computer systems or whatever uh, that run this virtual world. It never actually says that. But each day they drive out into the desert in this virtual world. They go to this hub, basically, and it's their way out. Basically, you, you go there, you kind of beam out into your real body, and then you go to work. And, you know, your wife stays home, cooks dinner. Um, you come home to a, a home-cooked meal and... Uh, a glass of scotch and all your buddies come over with their wives to party it up at night and you just have a great time, right? Uh, just You just have this very picturesque 1950s male-dominated existence. And I think that pretty much explains it. You know, early in the film, one of the characters, Margaret, starts to figure things out um, and she's promptly removed or, I, I don't know, they, they, they remove her, they treat her, they put her back into the community, but it she still ends up taking her own life. And through that, you know, Alice begins to figure things out as well, slowly but surely figuring out everything. And, and after they try to kind of recondition her and, and re- reprogram her and put her back in uh, to the subservient role in the community, it didn't, it didn't really work. She continued having flashbacks to her real life, and she figures out that her husband was in on it, where originally she just thought her husband had been manipulated, had been tricked, um, just like her, but she finds out her husband was very much a part of this. Um, so, you know, at the end she escapes, and, and that's where it feels like for me that she, I don't know, she, she kind of made it out, so it was kind of like a, I guess, happy ending. I mean, it's not the happiest. She she did have to kill her husband to, to do it and find out that she had been manipulated and all this stuff and, like, kept somewhere against her will. Um, but she made it out and she made it out. Okay. Right. And and that, that's kind of like where I'm like, uh, it could have, with the story being so ominous and disturbing, I felt like it deserved a a creepier ending or a more open ended finale. It was a little open ended because we didn't actually see her wake up in her real body, but, um, I don't know, which it, it, that works. That works for the film because the whole time we have the perspective of inside of this reality, but we never get to see outside in real time unless it's, uh, like the, the only time you get to see the real world is through her memories. Um, and, and so it kind of made sense that like once they were once she was out of this, we didn't get to see anymore. But I don't know. I just wanted a little something else. I wanted to walk away from this like super disturbed, right? <laughs> With her getting away, making it out. I, I don't know. I guess a happy ending, it, it kind of felt a little bit, it felt a little flat for me. Uh, but it's fine, you know, I, I I feel like it could have been better, but it was fine. Anyway, I want to know what you guys think of this film. Let me know in the comments below, or if you're listening in podcast form, hit me up on Instagram or Twitter, at Real Brett Scott. Let's talk about it. Uh, let me know what you think of it, and, and I will engage back and forth. Um, I love talking entertainment, pop culture. In fact, that's mainly what I do here on this channel. So if you're into that sort of thing, please subscribe, uh, or favorite or follow the podcast, And if you do decide to stick around and subscribe, then I'll talk to you again real soon. Thanks.